Well, hi, as you heard, I'm, I'm Ben. Um, so before I start my talk, I would like to put things in context with a little commercial. Um, so where we are in our group, uh, the situation that we deal with is with scientists that have a, maybe a demo or a toy application in their laptop, but to run the real thing to get the real results, they need to run at scale no? in thousands of computers. They may have heard about the cloud, the grid, or the new buzzword. So the problem is this one. Like how do you take what the scientists did in the laptop and take it to the cloud? Um, um, that's what we are, right? That, that, that's us. So we are the other. We try to take <laughs> as easy as possible what happens in the laptop to the cloud. And, and this is the plug to this workshop. Uh, Michael already mentioned this. Uh, you cannot be portable in many computers without being able to reproduce. And this is where, where we come from. In particular, one of the tools that we provide is called Makeflow. And, and you're going to laugh about my definitions after seeing the definitions of Lean. So what I said here is that Makeflow helps you execute workflows in, the, in distributed systems. Uh, the kindergarten definition of that is a workflow for us is simply a set of interdependent tasks that you somehow relate to each other. What, a, what, what tasks we are talking about? It might be as easy as find me this pattern in this file or apply a particular algorithm to a particular image. That very precise task definition. What do we um, mean by distributed systems? Nothing more complicated than many computers working together. If you want, you, you cannot write that in your grant application, so you have to say uh, in the cloud, the grid, the batch system. But, but really, it's just computers working together. Right? Now, the main, the main message of my, of my talk, and, and, uh, and it's a little embarrassing because it's very simple, but really what allow us to, uh, allow us to work and to do all the things that we do is to be very precise and very strict about what we mean in task execution. For us, a task that we can execute in many places is simply a sandbox. That sandbox can be anything that you want. It might be a container. It might be something as simple as just a directory and you set some environment variables. We don't care. Uh, but to that box, we copy the inputs and that copy is copy in my video I just declare I'm going to import this file. I know where this file is this is. But it's very important for us to know where the inputs are coming, which command is executed so we can import it. And then at the end of the execution, we copy the outputs out. And I as I said, if you know anything about computer science, this is like, what are you talking about? This is this is kindergarten, right? But this is Super important for us. If this model breaks, we cannot do anything in our tools. Uh, and coming back about uh, HPC, you can see how this makes difficult for uh, things for us, right? Because we're not talking about anything about communication between these parts. Uh, we haven't. Uh, I mean, responding again to that to that uh, question, we haven't um, thought about HPC a lot. Just because usually when you use HPC system, you write for a particular machine. So from the start, reproducibility makes it, it is hard. But coming back to, to, to my talk, if you, if you remember this slide, I'm, I'm happy. Even though it's super simple, this is what allows us to do what we do. Ah, because if you're able to define this, this type of task, then you can portable move them in some way and then you can reproduce them in some way. So how do we do that? In the particular case of Makeflow, we are very strict about when, where we put our definitions. We feed the workflow definition, if you, if you like the formal name, the DAC definition, the abstract definition of the workflow, we feed it to Makeflow. Uh, then we have a bunch of drivers that allow us to execute in many places, even as the line is in front of it. Maybe you want to run in the cloud on EC2, uh, support even HPC with Slurm. The important thing is that 
For this process, it doesn't matter whether they are executed, even though we have inputs, outputs, and commands. Uh, and how do you create these boxes? That's also independent. That comes from wrappers so you can feed them actually. And all these parts are independent. Uh, something that Mike already mentioned, uh, we can create the boxes in many ways. The more powerful way that we have is the one that I am created, which is called Umbrella. When you can say, I need this particular Linux version, I need this particular commands available to me, and then Umbrella is able to create that box and then execute the task. Uh, so coming back to um, what's important for us in being portable is really executing these three parts independently. Make now our command, where do you want to run? The web system, the cloud, whatever. How do you want to run it? With umbrella, defining the environment, and finally, what to run, right? the, the particular um, workflow. And this is not a, this is not only words, right? Like people already use it. You can you can take a look at some examples of workflows uh, that people already created and have published research with them. So we have a GitHub repository with examples and also of our our software. And uh, and that's all I have. Uh, I have a couple of more slides of how to define the workflows. I don't know if nobody. If anybody wants to see that, but other, yeah, yeah we, we have time. Um, so something that we did, and, and again, just to show you that we are really strict about this. Uh, so how to define a workflow in Makeflow follows this, the same syntax of the Make Unix program, if you're familiar with. If you're not familiar with, it's something super simple. You just say, this your outputs, colon, List my inputs and the recipe, the command. And that's our task. It doesn't matter if you're going to execute in Condor, in the cloud, in HPC's DARM, doesn't matter. This definition of the task doesn't change. Now, in order to create particular environments, we can add some things to this workflow, right? So maybe you know that this task requires particular hardware. So we can say, okay, Give me four cores, two gigs of memory, and 10 gigs of disk. That didn't change what the task was. The only thing it changed was how we created the box. And if you want to be more sophisticated, then you can use umbrella, right? And then you say, two minutes. Ah, oh, thank you. And then umbrella is going to create our box in a certain way. I'm, and I'm cheating, right? Because this looks very pretty, it's very simple. But really, if we go to the umbrella specification, is where all the gory details are, right? Uh, particular range version of system, uh, the hardware, and so forth. Uh, and, um, and that's it. So uh, if you have any questions. Yeah. Yes. Are they environments? Umbrella. Yes. Some seems to be generated. I think I saw some commands there. Yeah. Where, where, what process input that they went into that? What, where is the input of that uh, environment? Oh, the input. So the input you do in you can do in two ways, and and Hayan probably can answer this better than me. But you can either specify it here with a directive inside the definition of the workflow, or you can do it globally. Um, let me go back. Oh, which kind of element? Yeah. So you can, so, yeah. yeah, so in the, in the example that we have here, uh, for example, the, the example that I have, has, she actually gives you a Docker image that you can da download from our website. And it can be Docker or it can be from another tool that we have, Parrot, which are just packages that you you can download from somewhere. And, and if you want to add something. I think, uh, um, Hayan, could you speak to the microphone and then uh, the senior team? Thank you. I do appreciate it. Sorry, Nana. It's wonderful. 
Great lecture. Huh? So uh, I think your question is you want to know what kind of different section inside the. Uh, so in this, in the ban, ban shu, you, you can see the hardware, right? Uh, the car disk memory and architecture, and you have the kernel, and you have the operating system. In fact, the source is just a tabout. It can be easily converted into a Docker image, or it can just run as a tabout using some other tool. In fact, uh, the, the one we stand now show in the slides, uh, it also includes a software section which describes your software, and the data section describing all your data, input data, and the environment section describe all the environment variable you want, and a command section, which is the command line you want to run. Do you and, have a, a yeah, we can. Um, either can open the tab and it will uh, okay. display for you. Well, we're trying to make this offline. Uh, even, even no time, I can just show you in my yeah, laptop yeah. after this. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, and just to, 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 to close that, uh, this, this was Hayan's dissertation who she successfully defended less than a month ago. So. Mm -hmm.